advanced civilizations that existed before humans, the theory of a prehistoric global civilization. This isn't just your everyday history lesson, it's a journey into a world of ancient enigmas and archaeological puzzles. So picture this, a global advanced civilization that existed way back in prehistoric times. We're talking about a civilization that might have spanned the globe, leaving its mark on various cultures and continents. The idea is that remnants of this lost civilization can be found in the striking similarities among ancient structures and myths from different parts of the world. Now let's zoom in on the evidence that gets everyone talking. Think about those massive stone circles at Stonehenge, the awe-inspiring pyramids of Egypt, and the mysterious temples scattered across South America. Some folks look at these marvels and say, hey, there's no way these were all coincidences or independent inventions. They argue that the similarities in construction techniques, architectural styles, and even the astronomical alignments point to a shared source of knowledge, possibly an advanced culture with technology and understanding that might rival or even surpass what we know today. But hold on, not everyone's on board with this idea. Mainstream scholars, the folks who spend their lives digging through the past, have a different take. They say, wait a minute, these similarities? That's just convergent cultural evolution. In simpler terms, they believe that different societies, facing similar challenges and environments, naturally came up with similar solutions. It's like different chefs in different kitchens cooking up similar recipes because they have the same ingredients. But the theories don't stop there. Some go even further, suggesting that maybe, just maybe, this ancient civilization had a little extraterrestrial help. Could it be that ancient aliens gave our ancestors a cosmic nudge, sharing knowledge and technology? It's a theory that's as wild as it is fascinating. And then there's the mythological angle. Across the world, from the legends of Atlantis to the stories of Lemuria and Mu, we find tales of lost civilizations, sunken continents and advanced societies. Could these be more than just stories? Could they be echoes of a forgotten chapter in human history? So what's the truth? Did a global advanced civilization once walk the Earth? Or is it all just a mix of coincidence, independent innovation, and a sprinkle of human imagination? The debate rages on. All right, let's take a cosmic journey to explore one of the most mind-boggling mysteries out there. The Dogon people and their incredible knowledge of the Sirius star system. Picture this, an ethnic group in Mali, Africa, with astronomical insights that seem way ahead of their time. It's a story that's as intriguing as it is puzzling. Now the Dogon, they're known for their deep understanding of the stars, especially Sirius, which is actually a star system, not just one star. What's wild is that they knew about Sirius B, a companion to Sirius which you can't even see without a telescope. And they even talked about a third star, Sirius C, way before modern astronomers confirmed its existence. This is like having a secret cosmic map in your backyard without any high-tech gadgets. But how did they know all this? Well, this knowledge came to light thanks to French anthropologists Marcel Griol and Germain Dietelen back in the 1930s and 1940s. They spent a lot of time with the Dogon and came back with stories that left everyone scratching their heads. The thing is, some folks think maybe the anthropologists got a bit carried away or misinterpreted the Dogon's symbolic stories as literal astronomical facts. Here's where it gets even more interesting. Some people think the Dogon's knowledge is so out there, it must have come from an advanced ancient civilization or maybe even extraterrestrial beings. But most experts lean towards a more down-to-earth explanation, like the Dogon picking up this info through contact with other cultures or astronomers. The Dogon's fascination with Sirius isn't just about stars, it's deeply woven into their culture, their art, their entire worldview. Sirius plays a starring role, pun intended, in their creation myths and big ceremonies like the Sigui Festival, which is this grand event that happens every 60 years. And let's not forget the bigger picture. The Dogon are known for their rich culture. We're talking stunning art, complex social structures, and seriously impressive architecture. All of this gives us a fuller picture of how they view the cosmos. Going on a journey through time and myth to explore some of the most captivating and mysterious ancient civilizations ever spoken about, Hyperborea, Mu, and Lemuria. These places are more than just legends. They're like whispers from a past that might have been filled with secrets and wonders. First up, Hyperborea. This isn't just your regular ancient land, it's like the ultimate paradise from Greek mythology. Think a place where it's always sunny, no one gets sick, and people live incredibly long, blissful lives. 
It's said to be so far north, even the north wind can't reach it. And guess who was a big fan? Apollo, the sun god himself. He'd supposedly spend his winters there away from Greece. The Hyperboreans, they weren't just happy sun lovers, they were described as giants, incredibly advanced, maybe even with some kind of ancient high tech up their sleeves. Now let's talk about Mu and Lemuria. Mu's this legendary lost continent in the Pacific, a bit like Atlantis. Imagine a whole civilization advanced and thriving, and then one day it just sinks into the ocean. And Lemuria. It's said to be this lost land in the Indian Ocean. It was initially a scientific idea to explain why lemurs are found in Madagascar and India, but nowhere in between. Both these places have become symbols of lost knowledge, often depicted as spiritually and technologically superior, maybe even with inhabitants who had special powers or get this connections to aliens. Speaking of aliens, these ancient civilizations are a goldmine for ancient astronaut theories. Some folks believe the knowledge and achievements of places like Hyperborea, Mu and Lemuria came from extraterrestrial visitors. Imagine that, ancient humans rubbing elbows with aliens. Let's set the scene. Gobekli Tepe, located in modern-day Turkey. This place is ancient, and I mean really ancient. We're talking about a site that dates back to around 10,000 BCE. To put that into perspective, it's older than Stonehenge and the Egyptian pyramids. That fact alone is enough to make any history buff do a double take. But what's truly mind-boggling about Gobekli Tepe are the megalithic structures found there. These aren't just a bunch of old rocks. They are sophisticated constructions with massive stone pillars arranged in circles. Each pillar is intricately carved with animal figures and abstract symbols, showing a level of artistic skill that's way ahead of its time. Now, here's where it gets even more intriguing. The discovery of Gobekli Tepe suggests that our ancestors were not just simple hunter-gatherers at the time. The level of organization and craftsmanship needed to build this place implies that they had social structures, specialized skills, and maybe even some form of spiritual or ritualistic practices far more advanced than what we previously thought possible for that era. And guess what? This site was intentionally buried. Yes, you heard that right. Around 8000 BCE, for reasons still unknown, these people buried the entire complex. This act adds a layer of mystery to Gobekli Tepe. Was it a sacred act? A protective measure? We're still trying to piece that puzzle together. The implications of Gobekli Tepe are huge. It's making us question the timeline of civilization as we know it. It's like finding a hidden chapter of human history, one that could change the narrative of our evolution from primitive wanderers to sophisticated societies. But hold your horses, there's more. Some theorists even speculate that Gobekli Tepe's creation was influenced by extraterrestrial visitors. They argue that the astronomical alignments of the pillars and the advanced knowledge required to build such a site hint at otherworldly inspiration. While mainstream archaeology doesn't support this, it's a theory that stirs the imagination. And now going underwater, diving deep into the mysterious civilization of Dwarka. Picture this, a city so grand and mystical it's been the talk of ancient Indian legends and modern archaeology alike. Let's peel back the layers of this fascinating tale. Dwarka, often called the Atlantis of the East, holds a special place in ancient Indian lore, especially in the epic Mahabharata. The story goes that this city was crafted by the deity Lord Krishna himself, a place of such splendor and magnificence that it seems more like a dream than reality. But the legend takes a dramatic turn. This majestic city is said to have been consumed by the sea, vanishing in a cataclysmic event, leaving behind nothing but whispers of its glory. Fast forward to today and the mystery of Dwarka has taken a fascinating twist. Off the northwestern coast of India, Underwater archaeologists have been playing a real-life game of treasure hunt. And guess what? They've stumbled upon something big remnants of what looks like an ancient submerged city. We're talking ruins, artifacts, the whole shebang, all lying quietly under the sea. These findings are like a history detective's dream. They paint a picture of a city that knew what it was doing. Well-planned streets, sturdy structures, maybe even bustling ports. It's like catching a fleeting glimpse of a civilization that we thought existed only in myths and stories. But here's where it gets tricky. While these underwater discoveries are mind-blowing, they haven't given us all the answers. Is this really the legendary Dwarka of Krishna? Did this place actually exist as the epic tales describe? Or is it just a mythical city that found its way into ancient texts? We don't have all the pieces of the puzzle yet, but the clues we've unearthed so far are undeniably intriguing. 
diving into the mesmerizing legend of Atlantis, a story that has intrigued and baffled us for ages. So let's set sail on this ancient mystery. The tale of Atlantis first makes a splash in Plato's famous dialogues, Timaeus and Critias. Plato, a bigwig in the world of philosophy, spins this yarn about a super-advanced civilization that supposedly existed a whopping 9,000 years before his time. According to him, Atlantis wasn't just any old civilization, it was a powerhouse with cutting-edge technology, a society that would make even modern civilizations look twice. Picture this. Atlantis, a massive island nation decked out with all sorts of tech marvels, a society so organized it would put a Swiss watch to shame and a navy that ruled the waves. But here's the dramatic twist. This mighty island is said to have sunk into the ocean depths in just one catastrophic day and night, like a cosmic magic trick, gone in a flash. Now the burning question, was Atlantis real or was Plato just spinning a good yarn? Some folks think it was all allegory, a made-up story with a moral. But then there are others who are all in on Atlantis being as real as you and me, a civilization that maybe kick-started the legends of advanced societies lost to time. Göbekli Tepe, located in southeastern Turkey, is an archaeological marvel that continues to baffle experts. Estimated to be over 11,000 years old, it predates Stonehenge and the Egyptian pyramids, challenging the conventional timeline of human civilization. This site comprises numerous massive stone pillars, some reaching heights of up to 20 feet and weighing several tons, intricately carved with animal motifs and abstract symbols. The pillars are arranged in circular structures, believed to be ceremonial or religious in nature. What makes Gobekli Tepe unique is not just its age, but the sophistication evident in its construction. It was built by a society that was presumed to be simple hunter-gatherers, Yet the complexity of the site suggests a high degree of social organization and advanced architectural skills. This contradicts the established notion that such complex societies only formed after the advent of agriculture and settled life. One theory about Gobekli Tepe's purpose is that it served as a religious temple or site for ritual gatherings. Some archaeologists speculate that its construction could have been driven by astrological events or as a form of ancestor worship, Intriguingly, the site appears to have been intentionally buried several millennia ago, leading to theories that it could have been a ritualistic closure or protection against invasion or natural disaster. The ancient city of Dwarka, mentioned in Hindu scriptures and believed to have been established by Lord Krishna, has long been a subject of intrigue. Recent underwater explorations off the coast of modern-day Gujarat, India, have unearthed structures and artifacts that some believe are remnants of this legendary city. The findings include stone structures, pottery, sections of walls and beads, which suggest a rich and well-established settlement. These discoveries have reignited interest in the historicity of the Mahabharata, an epic narrative in which Dwarka plays a significant role. According to the text, Dwarka was a city of unparalleled splendor and prosperity, which submerged into the sea following Krishna's departure from the world. The archaeological findings lend some credibility to these ancient texts, blurring the lines between myth and history. The exact age of the underwater ruins is still a subject of research, with estimates ranging from a few thousand to several thousand years old. The city's advanced urban planning, as suggested by the layout of the discovered structures, indicates a highly sophisticated civilization. Theories about Dwarka range from it being an important port city of the ancient Indus Valley civilization to a standalone powerful city-state with significant maritime links. The Sumerians, an ancient civilization that flourished in the region of southern Mesopotamia, which is known as modern-day Iraq, are credited with one of the most significant inventions in human history, the creation of writing. Their script, known as cuneiform, emerged around 3500 BCE and marks a profound transition in human culture from prehistory to the historical period. Cuneiform began as a system of pictographs, used initially for simple record-keeping and accounting purposes. Over time, these pictographs evolved into a complex system of writing, enabling the Sumerians to document laws, myths, business transactions and daily events. This innovation was revolutionary as it allowed for the preservation and transmission of knowledge across generations and distances. The Sumerians used clay as their writing medium, inscribing wet clay tablets with a stylus made typically from a reed, 
Once inscribed, the tablets were baked in the sun or a kiln, making the writing durable. Thousands of these tablets have survived, providing a wealth of information about Sumerian culture, economy, religion, and daily life. One of the most intriguing aspects of Sumerian writing is its sudden appearance and rapid development. There is no clear precursor to cuneiform, leading to various theories about its origins. Some scholars suggest that it was a result of Sumer's complex society, needing a method to document transactions and property, while others theorize external influences or an evolutionary leap in cognitive ability. The Sumerians were also advanced in other areas, such as mathematics, astronomy and architecture. They developed a base 60 number system, which influences how we measure time and angles to this day. Their understanding of astronomy was sophisticated, as evidenced by various astronomical records and observations. The legacy of the Sumerians extends beyond their writing system. Their myths and epic tales, most famously the Epic of Gilgamesh, are some of the earliest literary works known and have influenced subsequent cultures and literature. The Sumerians' innovations in writing, mathematics, and their rich cultural contributions make them one of the most fascinating and influential civilizations of the ancient world. The Nazca Lines, located in the arid coastal plains of Peru, are among the most mysterious and awe-inspiring ancient artworks in the world. These large-scale geoglyphs, created by the Nazca culture between 500 BCE and 500 CE, include more than a thousand individual figures ranging from simple lines and geometric shapes to intricate depictions of animals, plants and imaginary beings. Some of these figures span up to 1,200 feet, making them so vast that their full forms can only be comprehended from the air or high vantage points. The creation process of the Nazca lines involved removing the reddish-brown iron oxide-coated pebbles that cover the surface of the Nazca desert and revealing the light-colored earth beneath. This contrast in color creates the striking images we see today. The lines have survived centuries due to the region's stable climate and minimal wind erosion. The purpose of the Nazca lines remains a subject of debate and fascination. While some researchers suggest they served astronomical purposes, aligning with celestial bodies for ritualistic or agricultural calendars, others propose they were part of religious practices or paths for ceremonial processions. There are also theories suggesting a connection to water, which was a scarce resource in the region, with some lines pointing to sources of underground water. The Nazca Line's discovery and subsequent study have provided valuable insights into the Nazca culture's innovative techniques and artistic capabilities. However, their true significance remains elusive, making them a captivating enigma of the ancient world. The Minoan civilization, flourishing on the island of Crete during the Bronze Age, is recognized for its significant contributions to European history. Renowned for their elaborate palaces, most notably the Palace of Knossos, the Minoans established one of the earliest advanced societies in the Aegean region. Their civilization, which reached its peak between 2000 and 1450 BCE, was characterized by stunning architecture, intricate art, and sophisticated urban planning. One of the most intriguing aspects of the Minoan civilization is their still undeciphered script, known as Linear A. This writing system, used for administrative and religious purposes, has resisted interpretation, leaving a gap in our understanding of Minoan society and culture. The later Linear B script, used by the Mycenaeans, was deciphered and found to be an early form of Greek, but Linear A remains a mystery. The Minoans were also skilled traders and navigators, establishing trade networks that reached as far as Egypt and Anatolia. Their art, often depicting natural scenes, religious rituals and sports, indicates a society that celebrated nature, religious practice and athleticism. The decline of the Minoan civilization is another subject of interest and debate. Theories range from a catastrophic volcanic eruption on the nearby island of Thera, Santorini, to invasions by Mycenaean Greeks. There is also evidence to suggest that natural disasters, including earthquakes and tsunamis, may have played a role in their downfall. Despite these theories, the precise reasons for the Minoan civilization's decline and the details of their societal structure and daily life remain largely unknown. The Minoans left behind a legacy of artistic and architectural marvels that continue to fascinate archaeologists and historians, 
painting a picture of a vibrant, advanced society that made lasting contributions to European cultural heritage. Teotihuacan, located in the basin of Mexico, is an ancient metropolis that once stood as one of the largest cities in the world. Its name, given by the later Aztecs, translates to the place where the gods were created, reflecting the awe and reverence the site inspired. Established around 400 BCE, it reached its zenith between 100 BCE and 550 CE, with an estimated population of up to 150,000 people at its peak. The city is best known for its grandiose architecture, including the immense Pyramid of the Sun, the Pyramid of the Moon, and the Temple of the Feathered Serpent. The layout of Teotihuacan is geometrically precise and highly symbolic, with the main thoroughfare, the Avenue of the Dead, aligning with significant astronomical points. The pyramids themselves are marvels of engineering and are constructed in a manner that echoes the surrounding mountain ranges, possibly to mirror the sacred landscape. Despite its grandeur, many mysteries surround Teotihuacan. The identity of its builders, their language, and the reason for the city's sudden decline remain unknown. No written records from the city's inhabitants have been found to provide clarity on these points. The origin and purpose of the site's extensive mural art, which depicts deities, animals, and scenes of daily life, also puzzle researchers. The murals suggest a rich religious life, but the specifics of their beliefs and practices are not fully understood. One theory posits that Teotihuacan was a religious and cultural center that exerted influence across Mesoamerica through its innovative urban planning and monumental architecture, rather than through military conquest. The city's wide-ranging trade networks are evidenced by artifacts from distant regions found within its limits. Interestingly, evidence suggests that Teotihuacan was burned and abandoned around 550 CE, possibly due to internal conflicts or resource pressures. The absence of a clear military defeat has led to the speculation that the burning could have been part of a ritual or civil uprising. The city's influence continued long after its decline, with Teotihuacan serving as a model for subsequent Mesoamerican cultures. The Aztecs, who discovered the ruins centuries later, incorporated Teotihuacan's architecture and iconography into their own culture, further adding to its legacy.